morning class. This is for project step one. Uh, the sales manager for an insurance agency has three offices in Wichita, Kansas. She's using an Excel worksheet to analyze the agency's financial performance and asks for help creating advanced types of charts and pivot tables to provide an overview. Go to the pol policy sold worksheet, which summarizes the number of insurance policies sold from 2016 to 2021. She asked to illustrate the trend in the data and forecast policy sales for the next two years. Click on the policy sold. Here's the data we want. Create a scatter chart based on range B2 through H3. Add a linear forecast trend line to the chart to project sales to 2013. And it asks us to resize and position the chart so that it covers the range B4 to H18. So we're going to go to insert. The type of chart we want is a scatter chart, which is this icon with the scattered looking dots all over it. So here's the chart. It also asks us to add a linear forecast trend line. Do that by add chart elements, trend line, linear forecast. There it is. Next thing it says is to resize and position the chart so that it covers the range uh, B4 to H18. So B4. H18. All right, that was step one. Morning class. This is for project step one. Uh, the sales manager for an insurance agency has three offices in Wichita, Kansas. She's using an Excel worksheet to analyze the agency's financial performance and asks for help creating advanced types of charts and pivot tables to provide an overview. Go to the pol policy sold worksheet, which summarizes the number of insurance policies sold from 2016 to 2021. She asks to illustrate the trend in the data and forecast policy sales for the next two years. Click on the policy sold. Here's the data we want. Create a scatter chart based on range B2 through H3. Add a linear forecast trend line to the chart to project sales to 2013. And it asks us to resize and position the chart so that it covers the range B4 to H18. So we're going to go to insert. The type of chart we want is a scatter chart, which is this icon with the scattered looking dots all over it. Here's the chart. It also asks us to add a linear forecast trend line. Do that by add chart elements, trend line, linear forecast. There it is. Next thing it says is to resize and position the chart so that it covers the range uh, B4 to H18. So. Before H D. All right, that was step one. Okay, for step two, we're going to go to the sales table worksheet, which contains a table named policies and details about insurance policies sold in 2020 and 2021. So click over to the sales table. Here are the policies. Sonia wants to display the amount of revenue by branch. So insert the sum of revenue 2021 by branch recommended pivot table. This is for Windows users. For Mac users, you want to insert a pivot table based on the policies table 
into a new worksheet and add the branch and field names of rows and the revenue as the 2021 field value. So um, here's the table we're working out of. We're going to go to insert, choose pivot table. It's going to use that table that we've created and put it into a new worksheet. Click OK. I'm going to drag it in to the end to keep up with it. Okay, so it says insert a pivot table. We've done that. Add branch and field agent. Field ID fields or agent ID fields as rows. So branch, it's a row, agent ID. We'll drag down and make a row. You can see it creates the pivot table for us. And we want to add the revenue 2021 field as a value. So here's revenue 2021. I'm going to add it as a value. Use revenue by branch as the name of the work new worksheet. So I'm going to copy that name, rename the worksheet. Revenue by branch. Apply the coral, coral pivot style, medium 12 style to the pivot table. So you just click into your pivot table, um, click into the design, expand it. You're going to look for the Coral, pivot style, medium. So that's tan. There's coral, pivot style, medium 12. So in the medium section, it's the second row, fifth one over. So we've done these two items. I like them to keep track of where we're at. Okay, remove the agent ID field from the row, rows area. So here's the agent ID. Right click and remove the field. See it narrows our table. Add the revenue 2020 field as the first field in the values area. So here's revenue 2020. Uh, let's try that again. There we go. Uh, it's in there twice now. New field. I'm also going to remove agent count because that does not pertain to what we're doing. Change the number format of the two value fields to currency with zero decimal places and the dollar sign symbol. So we come over here to our values and we right click on a value, do field settings. And we're gonna click on the number button here and change it to currency, no decimal places and the symbol sign. Click okay, okay. You can see it changed it for the revenue 2020. Now we're going to do the same for 2021. Right click. Um, and then go back to do that. Right, right click on the sum of revenue. Go to field settings. Choose the number button. Choose the currency. Move the decimal places to zero. Click OK. And OK. We can see our number is there. Last step of uh, step two is to use 2020 revenue as the column heading on B3 and 2021 revenue as the column heading in, B, in C3. So one way to do this is to right click on the value, go to field settings, change the name here Change the field name to 2020 revenue. 
Okay. You can see the title for this column is changed here. The other way you can do it is you can double click on the heading name here in the pivot table, and it'll also let you edit the same field. Okay, so those two headings, column headings are uh, updated. Step three, Sonia wants to add, include the average revenue in the pivot table. Add a calculated field to the pivot table named average revenue that adds the revenue 2020 and the revenue 2021 field values and then divides the result by two. Use average 2020 to 2021 as the column label in D3. Okay, so we're going to go to our, we're going to click into our pivot table. We're going to go to pivot table analyze. We're going to find the fields item and set button. And we're going to add a calculated field. So pivot table analyze fields, items, and sets, and calculated field. Okay, so the field name is going to be average re revenue and the formula. going to be revenue for 2020 plus revenue for 2021. So I'm doing parentheses because that's going to be the first part of our equation. Uh, revenue, adding revenue 2020 to revenue 2021. And if you'll remember, because it's a two year span, we're going to divide the result by two. That's what your formula looks like. And click add. And you can see it's now here in the, the list of fields. We're going to click OK. And now this has been changed to be the average of each of these locations. The other thing we need to do is change this to say um, average 2020 to 2021 and click OK. Okay, for step four, Sonia wants to display the revenue by branch data as a chart. Insert a combo pivot chart based on the new pivot table. Display the 2020 revenue and 2021 revenue data as a clustered column chart and the average 2020 to 2021 data as a line chart. Include a secondary access for the average 2020 to 2021 data. Okay, so what we need to do here is we're going to click into our pivot table. I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to choose combo chart here. All right, so we need to edit our data. So if we go to design and select data, actually it's done everything I think for us, but let's just confirm. So it's got 2020 revenue, 2021 revenue and average it. Okay, good job. Um, okay, there's one last part to set. Step four is to include a secondary access for the average 2020, 2021 data. So to do that, we click on the, the lines for this data. We right click on it and do uh, format data series. You'll see that it allows us to add a secondary access to this, to this chart. Okay, so we're gonna move right into step five. I'm gonna format the pivot chart to make it easier to interpret and to coordinate with the pivot table. So we're gonna display the legend at the bottom of the chart. We do that by selecting the chart, going to design, add chart element, legend, move it to the bottom. And then hide the field list and all the field buttons to remove clutter from the worksheet. So the field list is part of the, um, 
pivot table. So go to the pivot table analyze um, and you can just click this button here. All right. Then change the maximum balance for the value axis and left to 9,000. Um, so this is the value axis we're looking for. We want to format the axis. And you can see here's the, the bounds and we want to change the maximum bounds to nine. Well, actually it's nine million, not 9,000. Two, three, four, five, six, until nine million. There we go. The chart should change now. Yep. Is that? Then we're going to change the pivot table colors to monochromatic palette four. So with the table selected, go to design, change color, monochromatic number four. And then resize and position the chart so it covers A9 to D24. So grab the chart, move it to A9, move it across to D, and then down to 24, which is pretty much at. So there we go. Save, and that's the end of step five. Step six, Sonia asks you to provide a quick way to filter the pivot table and pivot chart by policy type. Add a slicer based on the policy type field and apply the coral slicer style form. So I'm going to click into our pivot table, go to analyze. There's a button for insert slicer. And we want to use policy type. Okay, see it creates a slicer. Uh, we want to change the style to the coral. Yep, that matches. Okay, display the slicer buttons in two columns. So we do that by um, You've clicked into the slicer, and here's where it says columns. So there's the two buttons, or two columns, and now the buttons are in two column layout. And then move in.